Ah, hey guys, it's Ben here ah, from Second Dynasty. Hey guys, it's Ben here from Second Dynasty. Ben here from Second Dynasty. Ben here from Second Dynasty. All right, how's that? Hopefully better. All right. Oh uh, wait, no. I've realised what the issue is. I've got Twitch on in the background. That that is a mistake. Uh, all right, guys. Uh, hopefully, you're getting this uh, all coming to you uh, through Twitch. It's uh, been two weeks since my last stream when we finished my last Kickstarter, Starship Five. Uh, I don't know where Zorma is today. He was supposed to be here. I assume he's still asleep. Um, it is quite early in the U.S. here in uh, somewhat sunny Sweden. Actually, uh, it is minus eight. But uh, the sun is out. That is minus eight Celsius, by the way. Hey, Rex. Nice to see you, mate. Glad I'm not just talking to myself. Although I wouldn't be just talking to myself because uh, I'm not Alvin. Um, <laughs> speaking of Alvin, he's actually in the background over there. Uh, Alvin is here for at least the next ten weeks as we work on the next project. Woo! And you can see already we've gotten a start. Um, we have secured the traveler license. Um, and uh, today we are going to be looking at some work on the Type S Scout, which is the first ship we're working on. We also will hopefully have the Beowulf out, and we're looking to launch sometime in the summer. Uh, June, July, somewhere around then, but it is a long process to get there. So this is the first of many Friday updates where we're going to go over this sort of thing. And I might also show you guys uh, my most beautiful recent print uh, since... I absolutely love it. Uh, let's see if the close-up works. It kind of works. I'm a little tiny. Let me see if I can I can increase this somewhat. It's not the best quality. I, I did move my computer over last time, but I want to get the camera because... Oh, <coughs> oh well, we're getting tangled. Oh, look at that beauty. Look at that. That is, of course, the, uh, the Cerberus. Uh, the exterior is fully printed now, although I did have an accident with it before, so I'm going to have to fix one of the turrets. And um, yeah, it's um, it's pretty big. I really like the profile of this thing. Uh, you can kind of see inside that we've got a gunner. Uh, I'm in the process of actually doing the interior, so let's let's. Um, I guess we could take the top off the front. Oh, sorry, that was one of the torpedoes rattling around. So I've just got the bridge done. You can kind of see it for scale. Along with the space city guy down there. So yeah, the bridge is done. I'm going to be printing the next uh, section tonight. Once I, I head home for the weekend. I'll leave one on over the weekend. Yeah, she's... She's got back. Very pleased with how this has all worked out with the turrets, the way that the barrels all sort of stay up. And uh, yeah, I just thought I would show that off real quick. Uh, even the, uh, some work does need to be done on the torpedo tubes. I'm not 100% happy with it. Um, but, uh, but I did fire a misprinted torpedo and it works very nicely. Let's see. All right. Ah. Oh. I, I think I'm getting the hang of this, guys. <laughs> anyway. Alrighty. Let's put this back here and get to the work scene. Ah, it's actually warming up in here now. Ah, right. So Alvin is going to be working on the ships with me. At the moment, he is also working on uh, some very, very sweet renders. <laughs> Um, let me see if I can dig up one of them. Uh, I'll just move this over to the other screen so you're not stuck with it. Um, what do you have on You can talk about some Visselot, Sales images. Oh. Yep, okay. Uh, I'm just gonna. I was just asking where to find the files. So let me just see if I can dig it up. Uh, because we, for those not too familiar uh, with the software packages we use, I use Autodesk Maya, uh, which is a, an industry standard in animation. Um, it's overkill for STL design, but uh, I am comfortable in it. 
and you can make things look very pretty in it uh, with a lot of work. I have been making things looking pretty with a GPU rendering engine uh, called Redshift um, but recently Maya's own Arnold has uh, offered GPU rendering so we wanted to test a new look since I've been using the same look since Starship 2 maybe even Starship 1 and uh, so let's see it should be in my mini factory and then Starship Miniatures Graphics, there we go. So let's see, this one is beautiful. So let's just put this over there. So I don't know if you guys can see all of the detail that's actually here, but the closer we get in, you can actually start to see that we've included this sort of like geometry that makes it actually feel more like an STL file. So um, even on the little one, uh, and uh, yeah, this this is for the missing um, Starship Three miniatures. We want to roll it out onto uh, so so that we can actually get it onto uh, my mini factory. A lot of people have been asking about these, uh, and for for other. Uh, ones. Let's see if we've got any more here that we could show off. Don't tell me, just close up. Uh, so let's see, we have the shuttle. Why isn't this opening the same one? I really like how that's coming out. Let's zoom in a little bit. Uh, let's see, and we have some transports. Ugh. Why can't I open it in the same one? All right. So th these are looking very, very sweet. I asked for a little bit of alone time with them earlier. <laughs> uh, just kidding, of course. But uh, I'm I'm very very pleased with the way these came out. So so far, Alban is he's working out. <laughs> if he keeps it up, look at all those lines. Just uh, just some of the detail that's in there. So. Um, he's off to a good start, and uh, this is what you'll be seeing, I imagine, uh, Starship, well, it's not called Starship 6, it's the, going to be called Traveller of some type. Uh, but we, speaking of Traveller, uh, what we're actually dealing with is the Type S. There are many, many variants, as you can sort of see here. Um, some uh, more usable than others, uh, but Mark... Uh, Miller, the, the uh, creator of Traveller, he wanted um, he wanted the more classic Traveller look. Uh, that is the sort of more arrowhead shaped one, more more like uh, more like this. It's quite a, a, a simple shape, uh, and uh, we actually have uh, some deck plans to work with. Although the first challenges uh, came up quite early uh, with uh, well, basically we had issues being that uh, these deck planes are all, all well and good uh, they're made to uh, a one square is one and a half meters uh, so it's pretty much D, &D scale uh, so one to sixty approximately um, but the problem is that once you actually put this over into a 3d model you really don't have the space that it looks like you have in 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 these maps so there is a translation that must occur and uh, I've been back and forth with emails with Mark. Uh, I've tried to get him onto the Discord more often, but he, he seems to be an email guy. Um, so we've discussed various different aspects of it um, with the type of Type S we're going after. Um, and we've sort of arrived at the conclusion that we want to keep this arrow shape. Um, but as far as the interior is concerned, some interpretation is going to be necessary just because of the translation uh, and you'll, you'll actually be able to see that we've been fairly faithful anyway I, I've uh, actually imported in a bunch of uh, files right now I've got you can sort of see this uh, structure that I built up in 3D on the interior and this is what we call just a, a block out or a white box um, it's just where we sort of try to get uh, the Key, key concepts of the design in place. Uh, we're missing some more ribbing up the top here that I've just disabled so that you can see down into it. Um, so th this ship is quite a challenge, uh, but if, if we turn on some of our uh, 
you, you can see I have these overlays which show the deck plans for the Type S. And you know, there's some compromises that we need to make, like uh, the walls I've moved out a little bit here on this end, and here they're actually coming in a bit. Um, the landing gear in particular is going to be slightly different, as is the vehicle bay. Um, if I just turn these off again, or at least some of them, you can see that we actually have this model. Uh, Marcus kindly provided some Rhino files. Uh, Rhino is a form of CAD, uh, but he has a number of the ships and vehicles in them. Uh, so we have this sort of uh, like ship's uh, raft. Uh, not very much space in here, and if you actually look at the deck plans, this is a, a prime illustration of where uh, we have to make some design changes. I've just moved it over uh, 0.75 meters there, so basically half an inch. Because uh, the vehicle bay, if we, if we look at this map, it should actually have the door here. Uh, but if we moved this vehicle over, you're going to see we run out of floor space here. We can't actually have this much room because um, according to Mark the deck plans are made at the halfway mark of the room so that means 1.5 meters up and I guess the base of the room too um, normally if we're looking at open lock uh, you would have it fits into like a, a one by one inch square and then you go up two inches which would be three meters uh, including approximately half a meter or you know one and two third feet uh, up to uh, to the actual floor level. So we have the clips under the floor. Uh, we are kind of doing that there, but I'm, I'm cheating a little bit with the Scout. We haven't entirely looked at the um, at the uh, at the Beowulf yet, which is a larger ship. Uh, we, I, I do have some designs uh, reference. There we go. Um, and then we can make these a little bit larger so we can actually see them. Uh, so the Beowulf is this ship, uh, which is quite a bit larger. There, there are some uh, 3D designs and things that, that uh, have, I have as references. And, and again, this ship actually has a CAD model that we can use as a basis. Um, and uh, that's what I hope to throw uh, Alban into next week so we can start exploring actually you know getting the layouts um, inside the core of the ship and then we'll re rebuild it in polygons um, and see where we need to customize things to make things work but it should be an easier ship by virtue of the fact that it is uh, a lot wider and the although the hull is curved in places it does create some issues um, over, overall the space is much larger and more manageable so this is going to probably be our widest ship we've ever done uh, and quite heavy I'd say we probably get in close to chimera weights I haven't weighed the uh, Cerberus yet I'm going to wait until the interior is in but I estimate it's also uh, I mean it's two inches narrower than the um, than the chimera but uh, still quite heavy by the way guys if you have any questions I am going to be mostly just muttering to myself for this hour. So, oh, great. So here comes the question. <laughs> I love the traditional Type S, but one of the many design flaws is that it doesn't have an airlock. Might be worth adding one in. Well, it's funny that you mention that because there are actually some variants which do add them in. Um, and it does become a little challenging. Um, I personally, if I had a choice, I'd go for this model because uh, I really like the, the airframe um, and approach to it. Uh, I've discussed turrets and, and things with uh, with Mark and uh, we have decided we're going to make the turret rings compatible with our existing turrets so you will be able to choose old turrets or new turrets and uh, although he says you know they the thought is kind of Star Warsy that they're manned but in reality they'd probably be unmanned it's always interesting to get the feedback from the man himself yeah. um, so retractable, I don't think we're going to be able to do that. I know they exist in Traveller, but it's just, it's difficult. And I really want to make the turret sizes the same universally between the Beowulf and the Scout. So um, where we, where you could conceivably put an airlock would be um, 
if you follow this ladder rung down even further underneath the ship and had something that slid off um, there I've seen scout versions where they stuck the airlock in here in this section but the angle is so awkward e even the Beowulf one um, I think there's a good illustration here they've, they've got an airlock here on the side but this is a lot smaller than what it actually looks uh, when you get to the scale that we work in mm. so I agree uh, it's weird that it doesn't have an airlock per se well that's not true it does have an airlock on the back uh, I'll show you uh, airlock and airlock it this uh, room here actually uh, you can sort of see that th this is a um, an iris door here and there's another one there so essentially this is an airlock at the back and I'm planning to have it there but as you can see the the size of the iris is quite like the, this ceiling space isn't so large like if we ditch this this map in the middle uh, it's not too bad but you'd have to sort of duck down um, they use grav plates in Traveller so they've got gravity it makes more sense to me if we move this so it would be in the center of this room essentially so this will probably get converted into some kind of airlock uh, if that helps uh, the I've seen other versions where they've stuck an airlock essentially here on the top of the hull uh, let's see note those are all the views top hole so essentially that, that there would be like an airlock there uh, I believe they exist on Let's see, where's the scouts? I believe this version, yeah. See, so it has a vertical hatch, a ventral hatch on this, uh, which means it's on the underside, and then it has a dorsal hatch as well. So this is, uh, yeah, or from different versions of travel. I kind of like the look of it too, that looks like the uh, Nostromo lifeboat. Um, but, uh, but Mark wanted to get back to that arrow shape and uh, I kind of feel already a little bit privileged to be able to work on a Type S. Um, if I'm being completely honest, it wasn't my first choice just by virtue of the fact that I knew there were going to be compromises that needed to be made. But fortunately, Mark seems to be happy with where things are at the moment. Uh, the other compromise I've done is, um, if we kill the lights here, you'll be able to see a little bit better into the cockpit. So the cockpit is not supposed to be this wide and uh, I found that the maps that existed, uh, the pilot and co-pilot actually couldn't see out of the windows from the position they were in. So the, the compromises that come are often about like, uh, you can see here, here is the floor and, and we're going to have these raised seats so that the pilot and whatnot can still see you out. And um, some versions have access to the forward landing gear. Uh, in the map, let's turn the map back on. Like you can see here, that there's an access panel, and then these wavy lines. That's that's the landing gear. Um, and you can see certain versions go forward uh, further forward than others. Um, so it, it's a mess, <laughs> if I'm being honest. Uh, but it's a fun mess to work on, and we're going to work on it for the next forty minutes or so. So if you do have questions about the scout, how we're compromising things, how, how uh, we're going to sort things out. Uh, anyone who's familiar with my work is that I usually work with open lock clips. We're going to use the clips to hide things together. Yeah, though, uh, yeah, Mark has got indeed. Um, I, I, I agree. I like a lot of the other designs. Uh, I know a lot of people like the flat nose as well, which kind of feels more like, you know, a space shuttle or something. Um, what I plan to do is maybe have some alternative back versions. So you could get, because uh, even the, the classic Traveler version, um, you notice that it has this sort of shape sticking forward a little bit here. That creates a different sort of look. Um, but unfortunately, one of the hardest things to change on these sorts of models is the actual airframe because you're talking about redesigning the entire exterior of the ship. It's a lot of work. Uh, not to mention, it's hard to keep track of parts. Although we'll have deck designer this time, uh, in the end at least. So yeah, so many different variants. 
and even even the stuff Mark could not provide me with one version that was a definitive do this one um, so we're kind of going off the deck plans e even if you um, not not to to uh, to crap on Mark's work or anything like that but you, you can actually see from the deck plan th this is I believe design uh, the, the Murphy IASS Murphy courier that I have uh, in front of you guys, uh, if we just ignore the express boat uh, for a little bit, um, it's um, you can actually see that the the image they have of it does not match up with the deck plans. If we look at the back of the ship, this actually has that sort of uh, shaped uh, backside that sort of goes like uh, let's see, like this. So it's like straight at the back, and then it goes diagonally up on the wings. Whereas this is just a tapered wing, and um, even the airlock position, they've got it in the, they've got a, I guess it's not an airlock per se, but it's a door that you could use to get out of the ship in an emergency at the back, but it's on deck three, whereas I've seen other designs where here you can see the door, let me see if I can zoom in. You can see on this older design that we have one door there, and we have one door there. So these are in the midship versions, but I believe this could actually be the flat scout as opposed to the three floor scout because there are those variants as well. It's a very complex thing. I've learned so much about Traveler. I don't know that I'll be playing T5 myself. Uh, I've heard rumors that Mark's working on a more uh, beginner version that should be coming out sometime very soon actually on Kickstarter. Uh, so I'm hoping that that will have something that's a little bit more simplified for dummies like me. Maybe somewhere in between Mongoose and T5. I don't know. We'll have to see. Maybe one of these days we'll be able to get Mark on. That would be good. Uh, Alright, so... Uh, the Brian Gibson stuff is nice, by the way. I've, I've looked at a lot of the Traveller art. And the, the, if there's one word to describe it all, it would be inconsistent. <laughs> um, I mean, and that's the way it's supposed to be. You're talking about a, a, an empire in the far-flung future, uh, you know, a far future enterprise, if you will. Um, so there are many different versions of the Scout, and that's kind of like what we arrived at. I fully realize that there's going to be some hardcore traveler people that are probably going to be upset with the way that I have to solve the interior of the scout ship in particular. It will not be fully modular. Um, and the reason for that is just that we don't have the floor space. You can kind of see, um, if I zoom in, we have the open lock clips in the middle, but as the hull tapers out, we don't actually have room for the floor, so we've just sort of got these panels in place as temporary holders that so I'm I'm trying to figure out how I can slot in walls and sections so you'll at least be able to customize the rooms. But it's a challenge, if I'm being honest. Let's see. Uh, the problem with the three floor version is that it ends up being much more than a hundred D tons. Yeah, well I mean Mark said basically the main th thing that changes things is the the fact that you're not you you can't actually have perfectly square modular rooms with it. So you're losing floor space, you're losing uh, ceiling space. Uh, he was measuring the volume of the shape itself. So basically uh, the these triangular um, volumes. Um, but yeah, it's, it's hard to compromise between things. Look, Another word that is specifically for the Scout in particular, I would say, is compromise, because it's just one of those, uh, those designs that uh, looks iconic, but yeah, in, in practice, it's very hard to turn it into this modular thing, and then travel has always been a little bit funny about, you know, yeah, it's three by three meters, but uh, for, for like, a, like a, a three meter cube for uh, a stateroom or something, but that also includes some hallway. Uh, when it comes to weight and volume, so it's it it is still a little bit funny. Um, 
the main departure I'm going to be making is with the landing gear uh, for this version. Th I mean, there's some that have wheels. Um, this is a, a real mess right now. Um, but uh, the reason uh, is uh, no normally the landing gear actually is faces the same way as the front landing gear. Uh, you can see here, uh, let's see, turn on the side view. Um, I actually have turned, uh, let, let me, I've got shadows on and all of this stuff on here that I need to turn off. So you can, you can see a few differences here. The landing gear is sort of blocked out uh, and it's not incredibly visible here, but the, the rear landing gear is oriented the same way. So it's essentially just coming down there. I've turned them 90 degrees because uh, I didn't want to waste the space in here uh, trying to figure it all out. On the deck plan we have here, they have these uh, the landing pad access essentially uh, has this vault in front of it. it it's not clear to me exactly where uh, that access is. I also am bringing the walls back further because having half squares seems a little bit impractical. Um, and I'll probably add a wall here where you can get some access or something like that. Um, so that's one of the issues. The other issue is the partitions. Uh, we can't use open lock walls because they take up a whole half inch. Uh, so I don't think you'd want to see bulkheads that were, you know, twice as thick as this, right? Um, I'm at the moment thinking of some kind of slot system so that you can actually slot down the walls which will be built specifically to have you know these features in the scout. Um, so I want to add some customizability but there might be a little bit more placement um, sort of like uh, yeah just just really compromises so um, yeah, that, that's where I'm at at the moment. Uh, the turret placement didn't quite line up, but I needed to make it with the, the ladder well here. Uh, all right, and I need a drink. Mm. All right, so what I was working on uh, right before I logged on was just uh, sort of like figuring out where these doors are. So if we turn the floor back on, we have a life support room here and we have a fresher here, which is the space toilet <laughs> slash shower. Um, I mean, technically you could probably fit one into these larger state rooms, but uh, we'll see. Mark is kind of like of the opinion that we should have, you know, pretty pretty sparse features, not too many features. Um, I don't know if we'll be able to leave that completely alone. We do have some reference material, although it would not be my choice of art. Uh, so we have a couple of different illustrations of the uh, rooms and things, uh, not particular to the scout necessarily, but um, they are quite simple. Uh, so I'm probably going to take these as a sort of starting point and then banify them. <laughs> um, like some some of these are way too retro even for me. Um, but you know, we'll, we'll take a concept like this engine and we'll probably build upon it. Some of my earlier work was designed for Traveller in particular. Uh, so. Uh, I, I agree, Solomon uh, Medici. Uh, definitely, a compromise is good these days. <laughs> um, here, here are some of the traveler uh, turrets too, which also illustrates some of the issues we have to contend with. Um, the things that are going to be hard, in particular, uh, these are sand casters. That's not too hard, I don't think, uh, to, to sort of implement. Um, I don't know. Oh, all of a sudden we can spool through these. Nice. Uh, then we come to the other turrets, and you can see most of them are not manned. Uh, but the main issue is uh, the turrets have not really been designed uh, to to have um, to be able to actually move the barrels. If you look at this barbette, 
Not only is the barbette a little too small in my opinion, uh, but the barrels do not move. They're quite firmly stuck in there and uh, that's a pretty useless turret because that would mean you'd have to move the entire ship to get it pointed anywhere. Uh, so it's almost as bad as a fixed weapon. Maybe even worse to get them to coordinate. So uh, yeah, there, there are some uh, compromises so, like I said, I'm going to make them compatible with the standard turret port. I might really look into actually how they link up, I don't know, but I'd like to ideally make them so that you can take, if you prefer my turret designs, uh, you can use them. Uh, we can otherwise, you know, make these. Look, if you can't see out the window, why have it manned? I just, yep. In any case, th there are questions. Uh, and there are answers, and I'm getting those answers from um, from Mark Miller. Uh, the missiles are a little bit of an issue, if you ask me. They're down here, because uh, it's not clear to me whatsoever. A, why do you need a turret to fire a missile? Uh, isn't it better to just have a tube, and then the missile itself maneuvers? Um, I guess you could get it firing in the general direction, but if you look at these missile launchers too, um, they're stacking the missiles horizontally, which I guess makes some sense uh, in one way as far as loading them is concerned. But then how does the mechanism actually get these horizontal missiles into a tube and launched out? It, ironically, the missile launcher actually looks like it does have <laughs> mm. uh, some height on it so that it could potentially... Uh, l let me zoom in. Um, it looks like you could potentially get, you know, some movement here in the, um, I'm trying to think uh, of the word for it, uh, not rotation, um, not inclination. Uh, like pitch or something? No, no, there's special words for it. Mm. Um, in any case, yeah, the, the up and down part of things. It looks like it works on the missile one, which is ironically where you would not need it. Um, and then I guess it's more like this tube that sort of brings it up and launches. I know from experience there's not a ton of room in there, even like these retractable... Maybe that's what they mean by retractable turrets, that the weapons are retractable. I'll have to ask Mark. Um, but in any case, we'll, we'll do stuff that's vaguely similar to this, but makes more practical sense. Mark himself agreed that there should... Elevation, thank you. Yes, elevation. Uh, Azimuth is... Uh, Azimuth is uh, the, the rotation, and elevation is the up and down. Uh, which I learnt when I was doing my very first mod, for Macross mod for Homeworld, back in the day. I created a mod, I think it still exists in some form today, but other people have taken over it. Uh, yeah, elevation. Uh, and then they have these wacky uh, retractable turrets that are meant to sort of like move them away from the hull so that they uh, divert fire, I guess. Um, and all of these would, I guess that cannot be manned. There's no way you could get into it. <gasps> all right, I need more water. It's a Friday, everyone. I'm happy it's a Friday, if I'm being honest. It's been a, a, a long week. It's very enjoyable to work on this stuff especially since it's iconic, but that also means you need to kind of respect it in a different way than you do your own designs. All right, so I will probably take, for example, um, going back to the references, uh, I think we have a hallway here somewhere. Look, at, like some, this doesn't necessarily all translate to 3D. Um, uh, thanks, Liger, for about the layouts. Uh, basically, the layouts are based on. Uh, oh, we need to get out, zoom out again there. So it's based on this uh, T5 version. I believe it's T5, uh, although I couldn't find it in the books. But this is what Mark provided me with for deck plans. So I'm kind of using this as the basis because it feels the safest to stick with. 
Uh, I've already had extensive dis discussions about the placement of the engines. Uh, these ones, for example, th this image, as I've mentioned, is different actually from this ship, which just adds to the confusion. Uh, side sliding doors. Okay, um, I don't know yet. And the reason why I don't know yet is because the thicker the walls are, the less space you have to move around in here. Like, you could not conceivably get two miniatures in here. Uh, I mean, three miniatures in here at the moment. Um, probably is the answer. Because, you know, it's me. <laughs> but you need to also have enough space in the hallway. And, you know, if you actually, at the moment, even with these set up the way they are, you could not fit a one inch diameter miniature base in here. It would have to be smaller than one inch to be able to fit in comfortably. So um, I would like to have sliding doors. Well, not necessarily sliding doors, but like doors that you can slot in. Uh, these would take them a little bit better. Um, at the moment, you know, I've got the door frames for this. This would technically be one of the iris doors again have no idea going back to the reference material you can kind of see the iris type door here to me an iris door is like the ones in the ventilation shafts in the nostromo from the alien universe the, the kind of sphincter like uh, versions technically i've seen that done in 3d but not at this scale i think it would fail at this scale it would be so awesome if you could actually have a little switch and it goes <laughs> uh but um and then we have these kind of doors, which I guess are interesting-ish. Um, uh, we'll see. I'll, I'll probably try to go... Uh, I'll try to use some of these designs as a basis so you kind of like feel like you're there. Um, yeah, I, I, again, I'd prefer to design to uh, FDM still um, because I feel at the end of the day it should look good on an FDM and you can't reasonably ask someone to put five kilos of resin into a ship mm. uh, PLA is you know a third of the price usually maybe even cheaper so um, yeah F FDM's the the better option and you know FDM is also improving uh, over time so um I, I'm very excited to leave my mark on the Type S. Um, but yeah, it will be the three-story version. Um, it approximates the dimensions it's supposed to be. I believe it'll be 25 inches long. And I believe the width, it's supposed to be 24 meters wide, but I think it'll be closer to 25 because it just sticks out a little bit longer on the maps. I've basically gone off the interior maps first. And even they are not going to perfectly match. And uh, in, in fact, I've imported several different versions into here to try and see like if there was like a baseline scout and the walls are different in each one. Uh, so <laughs> I feel like I, I have a little bit of artistic leeway here. Uh, I see the images as artistic guidelines. Each artist will be different in their technical accuracy. Yes, but you also got to remember I'm talking with Mark Mueller, so I don't want to piss him off. <laughs> I might want to renew the license in four years when it expires, so... I also might like to get some of my own ships officially into travel, we'll see. <laughs> that, that, that would be nice. Maybe I can swing it to Mark if I say, you get the royalties on my ships and your ships. <laughs> uh, Alright, uh, I see the same thing with... Uh, com I assume you mean conventional aircraft product definition, or is it convectional? I, that could be an aerospace term I'm unfamiliar with. You're the guru, uh, Liger. So yeah, uh, I was just going to move this door frame over to the other side as well. Uh, but yeah, we, we are going to run into some issues where you know there's just technically no place for that to slide. Um, these aren't laid out with that sort of thing in mind. Um, so there are going to be compromises. This, uh, being a closet and being a bathroom, maybe it should just have a door. Uh, more like a submarine. Uh, and here I'll, I'll probably, um, 
I don't know, may, maybe we'll have something to sort of evoke. Like, it would feel wrong to me if you made this door just a circle with a proper iris. So, but if, again, if we look at the definitions, and uh, mind you, Mark is very, very thorough when it comes to the definitions. He sent me all of this uh, semiotic standard. <laughs> Uh, so I have liked to include the semiotic standard from um, that Ron Cobb came up with in a lot of my work. So uh, I'll probably, you know, make use of at least some of this, although it is a little bit more fine detailed. So mm. we'll see what we can do. Um, but uh, where where was I? We were on. If we look at the uh, yeah on the definitions, uh, it has like iris valve above and iris valve deck so I guess these ladder wells to the turrets actually have a proper iris in them and that's doable like not with I I don't think I'd go for the proper iris uh, just because we don't have a ton of floor space to, to work with and to save more headroom up here I've essentially said well the floor up here instead of being the same sort of level as the open lock base which we have there the opposite would be true so that extra headroom is actually where our you know 0.5 meters comes into that so we can get as much head space in here maybe even get a miniature standing up i'm not entirely sure how how tall this is uh, but i should be able to if i duplicate this merge and then we rotate it like so we should be able to figure out approximately that that's actually pretty close to uh, getting a miniature up here because you would have uh, half an inch there for the wall which means that this is one and a half inches approximately in the middle of that so closer to being able to have a, a miniature standing up and there is still some room to sort of move this a little higher um, I do have some documentation which shows cutaways. Where was that? Not that one. <laughs> this was what I sent to Mark, uh, trying to illustrate uh, the the issues we have. It's a little bit smaller, but uh, yeah, I was comparing T one and T five and the difference at the back of the ships and. Um, he actually has this version of the ship in the T5 version, but that's not this ship. Hence my confusion. <laughs> uh, right, so yeah, uh, the headroom in there is going to be half decent. Um, I believe in the original design for the attic, it's, it feels wrong to call it an attic. Uh, they have the jump drive in there. And there's supposed to be an airlock at the back. I don't know how you meant to fit that space. Um, you can see that, that this lines up all right, <laughs> considering the way that I, I sort of laid it out. So I, I really am glad that we have a CAD file for the Beowulf so we don't have to start from scratch like that. Mm. <sighs> all right, because I've not been doing this for two weeks, I haven't gotten used to speaking for an hour at a time um, so yeah um, there are uh, this is one part that I want to discuss the air raft at the back because this is an example of one of the biggest divergences um, I think I did bring it up early in the stream but there wasn't many people here so you can see from the map that the vehicle bay actually is meant to be one inch further out, well half an inch than what I actually put it. This is another CAD model that Mark happened to have of an air raft, so we have the approximate dimensions. Um, yeah, the Beowulf I'd say is probably a chimera sized project, we'll see. Uh, but yeah, uh, so I spoke to Mark about that, he was happy with me uh, modifying it to work but the real issue was you can you can kind of see here that there's no floor space here that we that's usable um the this 1.5 meters is actually lost even if we take away the base tile and build it into the floor which we're gonna have to do with many things i think at the moment my my approach is we're gonna have something 
here that can uh, on the edges that you'll be able to slot sections into so the walls will actually sit on top of the bases which in some ways is good because uh, you'll be able to do the floors separate could a stretch goal for this ship to be a larger vehicle bay I mean um, we will probably have I've, I've seen versions where the engines are placed here and where they're placed here and we'll probably have a, a few different versions so I'll, I'll keep that in mind uh, but honestly it depends what you mean by a larger vehicle bay <laughs> like um, it could potentially uh, that's the other thing too like the, the cargo down here or whatever this space is it's kind of useless for cargo to be perfectly honest like unless you just have a half meter height one and a half meter height I don't know how they get things down into it um, some versions have like I've seen a hangar sort of space at the back uh, but that's on sort of like 3D versions like I, I did save a couple of images are oh, they not in here I don't want to go hunting I, I did get a few renders of people's versions for inspiration um, but they're not all um, like this is probably a more accurate version of what it would look like in that corridor um, so yeah just um, it's imperfect but uh, we'll, we'll make it work we will make it work we will make it work <laughs> <laughs> alright um, one of the fighters or shuttles from the Starfighter to all oh, this shuttle is not going to fit in there it is not. Let, let me open up another Maya and, and, and we'll just um, import them for scale. We couldn't even fit the rover in this thing. I don't think. So let's see. File. Oh, my new computer is so much faster. Uh, although I did manage to crash it yesterday. But I may or may not have had Civilization 6 on at the same time as I was rendering. Uh, let's see, Starfighter modular system. Let's grab a shuttle. Not not into a single level bay. Oh yeah, but I mean the thing is, either you have it out in the wing of the the ship. P potentially, what you could actually do is move the engines to the side. That would make far more sense, and then have a bay that's sort of like multi level. Um, so if I could grab this shuttle real quick, duplicate. I'm going to assign, wait, where'd the wing go? Oh, whatever, you'll get the idea. Uh, group, and then uh, assign a Lambert 1, copy it, and paste it into this scene. You've got no hope of fitting this into that. Like, the only way you could do that is if you made the whole rear section a landing bay and then move the engines to the sides which is one way to go but then you've got to wonder what's the purpose of a shuttle um, so this ship is quite small um, and you know th it's a similar problem with the, uh, the second level if you have a variant or I mean some, some things can be done um, but because of the shape of this, it is going to be difficult to customize. So I'm just gonna delete that straight away. Um, and then the other thing too is I don't want to um, I don't want to piss off Mark too much. <laughs> I may already be doing that. I don't know. Um, yeah, no, no disrespect to the work. I'd, I'd love to make this as modular as possible, but the shape of it is going to be an issue. Um, and that was always going to be the case. Um, I think as we continue on, if we do more like the modular ship sections where you haven't got this, you know, um, streamlined hull, where it's just these blocks and sections, that's going to be a lot easier to sort of figure out. But at the end of the day, one of my real issues is the partitions because you're losing that wall space. So these rooms which feel like they should be 
uh, able to. It, I'm, I'm afraid it's going to feel cla claustrophobic, and it may, it may, uh, and, and maybe we can't get around that. Um, but yeah, so I'll, I'll start with this layout. So it'll have two state, uh, four state rooms. Sorry, uh, a combined refresher. Um, we'll have a you know a space here that you, I assume has like a kitchenette and sort of dining and waiting places and, and uh, then you'll have your engineering room and all the fuel cavities. Um, I don't know exactly how we're going to represent it, what we're going to do with these frames. Um, uh, we'll, we'll have to see because um, it, it may be a case of that we do a fairly simple version of these but the main mechanism I'm going to have to figure out is how we're going to slot these walls in um, without using floor clips because we may just not be able to use the floor clips. Um, they could be done down the bottom, but then we have the issue of you know the sloping stuff. So right now I'm feeling like the w the walls would actually sit on the floor panels, and even looking at the art, you can sort of see that this is more inspired by like a conventional uh, aircraft. Uh, it looks more like the floor paneling of an aircraft. Um, varies in size. Um, between rooms, so I don't know what ship this is because uh, it does seem to be slightly slanted, but it's hard to tell because I don't know that the artist has the best grip on perspective. This certainly, I don't know that this actually is meant to be. I, I could swear Mark said this is what the cockpit looks like, but I think honestly, this looks like it's probably a Beowulf. Um, considering I, I did find some older artwork uh, which I think is in some ways a lot more interesting mm. and it, caught, it sort of fits with my retro <laughs> you have faith in my work thank you <laughs> um, and ships are meant to be tight they are but we want to make it so that you know it feels like you're still playing I guess this is a, a traveler fighter and this looks like it's the scout ship so this could be in, even though it's not quite the same uh, this could be a good way to go uh, yeah the Beowulf is uh, oh sorry no that's a, a colonial cruiser so I did get uh, quite a few uh, maps that he sent me but you know like the Corvette and stuff it wouldn't be as hard as I thought it would be to make that but um the, the problem is the size and the scale, to be honest, uh, which is becoming more of an issue the bigger these ships get. So the Scout actually is a quite an ideal shape. We're hoping in the pitch, pitch video to add some animation. I've got some exciting stuff planned for that. Hopefully we're going to build it just outside the office. We have this large chamber. We need to make it uh, light tight, but uh, could be done. Uh, all right, I guess so. Uh, you guys probably want to see something happening in here. Um, but th this is what I meant when in my last couple of uh, streams, where I was saying, you know, th these kind of sessions, at least to me, it seems like it could be a little bit boring because um, I'm really trying to just interpret the design and have a think about how I want to solve things. Like the, the landing gear here, for example, this is a mess because you're actually looking at two different sections um, and orientations. Uh, this is where the original one was before it was rotated. And I'm trying to just figure out, you know, will this fold up a fit into this space? That's, that's kind of like where my head's at with that. So it's some, something like that, uh, which is why I've gone wider. Um, I mean it needs more angles than that and it's actually supposed to be thicker and there's supposed to be an access point it's like what levels of detail do we keep in because I think traveler fans are going to get off on as much detail as possible right um, we won't be able to have working landing gears but I still want to think about the way that it would work so uh, even if we have a version that's retracted and a version that's extended because I mean you're really going to want the extended version if you're going to put it on your table right 
that we have, you know, two versions that look like they actually work. Uh, let's see. Would be cool to see it come to the rescue of your existing ships, <laughs> I guess. Uh, getting more into just floor plans only builds when look at larger ships. Uh, yeah. I, yeah, uh, I see what you mean. Yeah, that's something we might do further down the line, which is closer to like Starship 1 and 2, where it was just the interiors. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there's precedence for that in Traveller with these sort of modules that you can build, so we could do something like that, uh, at least with the floor plans, um, once we have a system sort of in place. So, what I'm probably inclined to do here is keep. We'll start with a smaller room. Um, I mean, in practice, even my existing rooms, they do have the walls on the inside. So it's not like this is really anything more than a compromise. So I'll probably actually look at the doors that we have in those, only I'll make it so that they slide behind. Um, so, so I think a sliding door in here, yes, that's something we could do. From one side, maybe. Doesn't look like there's enough room to slide it open here, right? We could also have a cradle that the ship can sit on so that the gear could be retracted when setting it on the table. Yes, that's something we could do. Um, you know, that makes a certain degree of, uh, of sense. Um, we haven't really done that before, but that could be an interesting uh, thing to do. It shouldn't be too hard and you could print it at like 300 microns fairly easily uh, and get a really strong sort of base just a couple maybe a couple of ribs I like it I, I'm excited for um, some of the features like, uh, like there's other machinery pictures they again the artists it almost looks like a cutout that they've just pasted into this scene and I think the scale must be way off mm. uh, especially with the ceiling being as it is also a window next to an engine that's interesting um, but yeah um, the general shape I think will look a lot better in 3d and I, I do like the, that these sort of sections are bolted to the floor um, that'll be fun to block out um, so engines we could have a couple of variants with the placement the machinery um, I want to give options basically uh, of course, the Beowulf is going to be far more customizable, just because you'll have that floor space. All right, I didn't get much work done, uh, but it kind of feels appropriate to to be talking about where your head's at as far as solving these things, right? Um, what we could do is just experiment real quick in in selecting some of these polygons and just widening this a, a tad I'm going to make sure I'm in the right scale uh, where did that go? killed the grid it's on 16 uh, let's move that to 40 and then oh, it would help if we actually put the grid snap on so we probably need to be like well what was that? Alright, so this is the, st the starting width, doesn't make sense. Okay, so we w probably want to make it like as thick as this or something to actually get a door in there. Even then it'll be quite a flimsy door. Um, so let's say that and then what I'll do is just loop around here. Then we'll just grab grab these faces, and then we'll just extrude them. So we've got a little hole behind the wall, <laughs> and um, and then we can actually take the basic form of this. Uh, Let's see, go to that, 
don't know what happened to Zoroma. Zoroma, he must have just fallen asleep. Right, so I'm just making a real basic shape here. Probably just can extrude this. Just to get the shape of the door. All right. Now let's just uh, do a little extrusion. Maybe in the, should we get it back on the grid. Something like that. Center the pivot so it's in the middle of the door, and let's just move it so it slots into there, and we can test out how we'll slide it like so. I think that's possible. Um, which begs the question of whether or not we should have that design that we've suggested previously. But anyway, just so I can say that I've done some modeling in that session, <laughs> it's a very, very rough thing. Um, on on the other side of things, at least at least someone's been working in the background. Hopefully, <laughs> of course. Um, all right, guys, we'll be back next week with another stream. Uh, hopefully, showing further progress. Um, but basically, yeah, we're going to focus on Traveler from now on. Uh, we might have one or two uh, guests. Um, I know that there is more work coming on deck design as soon it's just that John was a day or two behind so we couldn't show something off today uh, so hopefully there'll be something for next week on that and um, yeah th thanks for coming I hope it was at least inf informative on how I'm approaching the Type S and what my thought process is behind it um, I think it's been actually good to get these years of experience first before tackling this so I know what issues are going to be in the road ahead and hopefully we'll be able to give a really loyal traveler experience uh, that the fans will dig. Um, so I guess from this point on further too, uh, if you guys are in uh, traveler uh, groups or that sort of thing, it might be time to start uh, drawing attention to the stream or uh, to our... Um, I guess we need to get some stuff up on Facebook and whatnot, uh, illustrating travel, and then actually, you know, starting to build the buzz with it, so that when we do launch in June, it'll be our most successful campaign to date. I imagine it will have to be by virtue of the fact that uh, Traveler is so much more popular than my homegrown designs, um, and uh, yeah, I, I thanks again, guys, for joining me. It was nice to have a little bit of conversation today. Um, I think this time works slightly better for people, so we'll probably keep it. The only other thing I'm considering is maybe moving it back a day or two uh, to the middle of the week, um, where you might get a more uh, a, well, a more energetic version of Ben. <laughs> All right, guys, uh, I'm really going to end it this time. See you guys <laughs> next week. Bye.